Hi there, and welcome to this video about upgrading from Azure Access Control Services to Azure Active Directory registered applications. The use case for this scenario is when you want to create a daemon or a background application which will interact with elevated permissions with SharePoint Online and you will not use any specific user account but you want to use an application only account. The options available nowadays to realize this kind of scenario are using a Azure Access Control Services registered application in a specific target tenant or a Azure Active Directory registered application. So let me try to explain you why you should use Azure Active Directory and in case you have an Access Control Services registered application, you should upgrade it to Azure ID. First of all, uh, Azure Access Control Services is nowadays an old service based on an old development model. In fact, Microsoft retired ECS in November 2018. It is still available for SharePoint Online, but you should not use it anymore in new solutions and you should upgrade your existing solutions to the new model, which is the one based on Azure Active Directory. Uh, moreover, the Azure ACS is a model, is an authentication model for application, which is based on the uh, ADIN model of SharePoint, which is now kind of an old model. And nowadays you should rely on new modern development techniques. And again, one more time on Azure Active Directory application registration, where, for example, you can also leverage the resource specific consent or the site.selected permissions, which allow you to have a really granular selection of permissions whenever you need to consume a SharePoint Online site or content. So how can you actually upgrade from ACS to AAD? Well, first of all, you need to register a new Azure Active Directory application. You need to create an X509 certificate for the authentication. In fact, SharePoint Online for App Only requires you to authenticate providing an X509 certificate. You have to configure the API permissions that you will need with your application in order to consume SharePoint Online. And then you will need to refactor a bit your code in order to move from the uh, old school client ID and client secret and ACS to the new school of Azure Active Directory, open authorization and a client ID with a certificate. So let me move to the demo environment and let me show you how you can do that in practice. So imagine that we have an application that we already registered in Azure ACS. The registration goes through the APREG new page of your target SharePoint online tenant. And you will get back a client ID, a client secret, and you have to provide a title, an app domain, and a redirect URI for your application. Once you have done that, you can retrieve through the app inventory, app in.spx page under the SharePoint admin uh, UI, your application doing a lookup by client ID and you will be able to configure a custom set of permissions like you can see here right here when we provide an application permission of type full control to this application meaning that it will have access to all of the site collections in my tenant with full control right and then we have a site collection this one from ACS to AAD apps in which I have a document library the default one and I want to write an application to read the title of this document library and to upload a document into the document library. So we can do that using a C Sharp application, for example. Here I have an application in which I'm using some packagings like the PMP framework, for example, to speed up the development process consuming SharePoint Online and I'm using some other packages to manage the configuration setting of my application. In fact, in my settings, I will have the URL of the site that I want to consume, the title of the list or library that I want to consume, the client ID and the client secret of my application. As such, when I will execute my application, which is a .NET 6 uh, application, I will need to read the configuration from the app setting JSON file, I will translate uh, the JSON settings into a fully typed object, and then using a PMP framework, I can create an authentication manager instance and I can do the get ACS app only context providing the URL of the target site, the client ID and the client secret. I will get back a client context object of CSOM of the client side object model of SharePoint Online 
And then using CISOM, I can get a list by title, providing the title of my list. I can uh, do the load of the list, including the title, so that by executing uh, the query asynchronously against the SharePoint Online, I will get back the title of my list. I can create a random file content with random text inside of it, and I can upload the file again asynchronously in the root folder of my target library, simply specifying a random file name based on a GUID, and that's it. So this is a very simple example that we want to upgrade from ACS to Azure ID. So if I will run this application, even if it is a very simple one, we can see that in a matter of few seconds, we will have our console application running, and we will get back the title of the target document library, and the document will be created in the target document library. In fact, if I refresh this library, we can see that now we have a new file that I just created. Simple as that. Now, let's make the assumption that we want to upgrade this solution to Azure Active Directory. We can easily register a new application in Azure AD simply relying on PMP PowerShell. And specifically, we can use the register PMP Azure AD app command letter, providing the application name, which will be the name of the application that will be registered in Azure AD. We can provide the store where we want to save a generated X509 certificate, which will be created by the CMD LED and uploaded to Azure Active Directory and associated to our application in Azure Active Directory. We have to specify the target tenant, as you can see right here, as well as the username and the password to access the target tenant and register the application. And the password will be provided through a prompt to the user. As well as we can specify a certificate password, which will be used to protect the private key of the certificate. And again, here I'm using a prompt for the user. And then I'm going to save the .ser and .pfx files associated to the auto-generated file of my certificate into the current path. So by executing this CMD letter, we will have to provide, first of all, the credentials of the user that I want to use to uh, register my application. And then I will have to provide a password which will be strong enough, secure enough, to protect the private key of my certificate. The CMD LED will start creating the certificate and storing the certificate in the certificate store. Then it will create the application in Azure Active Directory and will wait up to 60 seconds for the app to be ready. And then it will launch the web UI to grant the permissions that will be automatically granted by the CMD LED to the application created. I don't want to waste your time, so I will speed up the recording while waiting for the 60 seconds. And here we are. Now we will have a web prompt to grant the permissions to our uh, newly registered application. First of all, we need to pick uh, a user account to use in order to do the grant of the permissions. And we will have to provide a password for that user. And once we have done that, we will be able to grant the permissions automatically added to the application registration by the CMD LED. If you like, using additional arguments for the CMD LED, you can choose the permissions that you want to grant, uh, targeting either SharePoint Online permissions or Microsoft Graph permissions. Right now, I'm using the default permissions. I'm accepting to grant those permissions to my app. And in a matter of few seconds, now we're ready. The page is done. Don't care about this kind of response. But now the application is registered. And in fact, if I will go to Azure Active Directory, we can see that we have my application registered. I can click on it. And we can see that we have an application with a specific client ID and directory ID. We can click on the certificate and secret to see the certificate that has been generated automatically by the CMD LED. And if we go to API permissions, we can see the permissions granted to the application, as you can see right here. So it is now time to consume one more time SharePoint Online, the same site collection as before, but now using the Azure AD registered application. The application is almost the same as before. We still have uh, an app settings.json file where we specify still the site URL, the list ID, the client ID, and this time the tenant ID and the certificate thumbprint, which we can get back from the certificate that was generated. Then instead of using 
an instance of authentication manager to create uh, the client context based on the ACS credentials, we rather read the certificate that we want to use to authenticate uh, against uh, Azure Active Directory, providing the target store, the uh, store location, and the thumbprint of the certificate, uh, which we can read from the settings of our application. And then we create a new instance of the authentication manager using this factory method, which is create with certificate, which will accept the client ID, the certificate, and the tenant ID. By doing that, the authentication manager will allow us to invoke the get context method to still get a client context of CSOM. And since we have a client constant, we can then do exactly what we did before in the previous sample. And we can read the title of the document library and we can upload a document into the target document library. So at the very end, we simply need to register the application in Azure AD. You can do that using the PMP PowerShell CMD LED, or you can do it manually as you can read it through the article associated to this video. And once you have got the application registered and the certificate created for you, you can authenticate using the authentication manager providing that certificate, the client ID and the tenant ID. You get the context and you are good to go. That's the replacement you need to do to upgrade your solution. Just for the sake of completeness, let me run this application as like as I did with the previous one. So now we have yet another console application running. We get the title of the library and we just uploaded a new document in the target library. In fact, if we go back here and we refresh, now we have two documents instead of one. And the last one was created a few seconds ago. Here you can find additional links if you want to dig into this topic and thanks for watching this video.